Hi, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Pearson, your elementary ELL teacher. Today we're going to do the story retell for Whistle for Willie. This is from the Journeys textbook for first grade, lesson 23. And when we do it, we're going to do our turn and talk routine where you think about your answer. You're going to pair up with your partner or with me, and then you're going to share out your answer. So let's get started by first reviewing our vocabulary words or our sight words from the story. See if you can read them with me. Number one is house. A house is a place to live. House. Number two, along. Along means to follow in a line with. Along. Number three, together. Together means with each other. Number four, boy. A boy is a young male person. Number five, father. A father is a male parent. Number six, again. Again means once more. Number seven, nothing. Nothing means not anything. Number eight, began. Began means to get started, began. So we're gonna begin this learning journey and today we're gonna to start with our learning target. So I'm gonna read it and then you're gonna read it with me. So I can retell the story, Whistle for Willie with my partner using pictures, words, and sentences. So read it with me again. I can retell the story, Whistle for Willie with my partner using pictures, words, and sentences. Success criteria. How will you know you're successful in reaching that learning target and climbing our learning mountain? Well, this is our roadmap to success. I will, number one, Answer the talk about it questions. I will say and match the characters and setting. I will write or match the lesson or moral of the story, what the characters learned. I will put the retelling pictures in the correct sequence. And then finally, number five, I will write or match the sentences to each picture saying what happened first, later, and last. All right, if you have a partner at home, make sure number one, you are eye to eye and knee to knee. Make sure you are looking at your partner when you are talking or when you are listening. And two, first one person talks, the other person listens. So here are the girls talking and the boys listening. And then you switch and then the next person talks and the other person listens. And four, don't talk too long on your turn or your partner will not have enough time to have a turn. So if you're my partner as well, you can either agree with me out loud or disagree with me saying, I agree with you, Mrs. Pearson, because and say why, or I disagree with you because and say why. So here's our first major event. And in our journeys textbook, it's you could reread pages 84 to 85. Look closely at the picture. Who do we see in the picture? Okay, so number one, what does Peter want to do? Hmm. Peter wants to say it in a complete sentence. Peter wants to. Well, if you remember, Peter wants to whistle, right? He saw a boy do it and he said, I want to whistle. So number two, can you tell how Peter is feeling based on the picture? That's why I said, look closely at his face and his body. What is his body telling you? So in a complete sentence, you would say, I think Peter is feeling because, and then say why. So think of a feeling word. Sad, lonely, scared, happy. I'm not sure. What do you think he's feeling? I think Peter is feeling because. All right. I think Peter is feeling sad or discouraged because 
he can't whistle yet, right? Remember, he doesn't know how to whistle and he really wants to. And that kind of looks like he's standing kind of in a sad way. And his face looks downturned and his face doesn't look happy. All right, let's move on to the next major event. Number two, look closely at the picture. What's going on there? And in the text, you would reread pages 86 to 87. Number one, after trying to whistle, what does Peter begin to do? So let's say it in a, our answer in a complete sentence. After trying to whistle, Peter began to... So, after trying to whistle, Peter began to turn and spin round and round. And it, the text said he did it again and again. So, number two, question number two, why do the objects or the things in the picture look different than in the first picture? They look different because... So say that in a complete sentence. They look different because. And that's relating right, right back to what he was doing. They look different because he was spinning and twirling so much that he got dizzy. So when he was looking around, everything was going all over the place like in a circle. All right, so number three, here's the third major event. And who is this? This is a new character. If you were to reread pages 96 to 99 in the Journeys textbook, you could answer this question. Number one, who is Willie running to and why? Who is Willie running to and why? Willie is running to because so if you remember Willie is running to Peter because Peter after trying so hard and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing he finally learned how to whistle so Willie is running to Peter because Peter whistled he finally learned how, and when, and when Willie heard Peter whistle, he came running. So that was the cause was Peter whistled, and the effect was Willie came running. Here's our last major event, and if you reread pages 101 to 103, you can answer these two questions. Number one. When Peter learns to whistle, who does he show? When Peter learns to whistle, who does he show? So we would repeat that question and put it into our answer. Peter shows, who does he show? Peter shows, you betcha, Peter shows his mom, his dad, and especially Willie, because he whistled to Willie and Willie came. So number two, last question. How does Peter feel now? Look at his face. Look at his body. How can you tell? So how does Peter feel now and how can you tell? So say it in a complete sentence. Peter feels because... All right, looking at the picture, I would say Peter feels proud because now he can whistle. I can tell that he feels proud also because of his body. His body is standing tall and proud and he looks like he has a spring in his step and he looks happy. So when you're proud, you're usually happy at the same time. All right, now we're going to do a completed retell. If you notice up here, it says name, so you'd normally put your name there. Retell for Whistle for Willie. The characters are, who were the characters? The animals and people in the story. The characters are, 
The characters are Willie, Peter, his mother, and father. Remember that was one of our sp uh, vocabulary or sight words, father. Okay, the characters are Willie, whoops, I don't know how I did that. Willie, Peter, his mother, and father. The settings are the, so there's two settings, two major settings. The settings are the sidewalk and house, or you could say the outside or the neighborhood. So the settings are the sidewalk and house or neighborhood. And now we're going to put, we'll try to remember the pictures in the correct sequence or order. What happened first, later, next, last? Oh, and then in the end, Peter learned. What was the lesson Peter learned? I forgot. Usually we do the characters and setting, and then we skip down to the bottom or the lesson because when we're in class, we cut out those three pictures, and that's what we do first. So that's why it's a little out of order. In the end, Peter learned that you need to keep, you know what this is right down here? You need to keep practicing because remember he kept practicing, he kept trying, he did not give up. So in the end, Peter learned that you need to keep practicing. Now we're going to put the pictures in order. First, later, next, last. So remember what happened first, I'll read it to you. Peter saw a boy who whistled to his dog. Peter felt sad because he couldn't whistle. Later, Peter tried to whistle, but nothing came out. Instead, he began to spin again and again. Next, Peter kept practicing again and again until he was finally able to whistle. Willie heard it and ran to him. Last, Peter whistled for his mother and father. He whistled all the way to the store and back to the house. All right, let's reread it. The characters are Willie, Peter, father or mother and father. The settings are the neighborhood or the sidewalk and house. First, Peter saw a boy who whistled to his dog. Peter felt sad because he couldn't whistle. Later, Peter tried to whistle but nothing came out. Instead, he began to spin again and again. Next, Peter kept practicing again and again until he was finally able to whistle. Willie heard it and ran to him. Last, Peter whistled for his mother and father. He whistled all the way to the store and back to the house. In the end, Peter learned that you need to keep practicing. Boys and girls, when have you learned a new skill but you didn't know it right away. Usually when you learn something new, you don't know it right away. You have to keep practicing. I know when I first learned to whistle, I didn't know how to whistle right away. It took practice. Same with riding my bike and learning to swim. You can't be perfect the first time. You need to keep going and practicing. That's an important lesson. So let's reflect on our learning. It says time to reflect. Here's Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too. They're looking at themselves. They're thinking, how did I do to, in this lesson today? And our learning target was, I can tell the main topic and key details of the story, Whistle for Willie. Or it could be, I could retell the story, Whistle for Willie, using pictures and words. Four, I could teach this lesson. I was able to answer all the talk about it questions and complete the graphic organizer. Three, I was able to answer most of the questions and complete the graphic organizer. Two, I was able to answer some of the questions and complete some of the graphic organizer. Or one, 
I had a hard time completing the graphic organizer and answering the questions. So what do you, how do you think you did today? Four, three, two, or one? All right, boys and girls, let's see. Oh, our last reflection. How well did you hit the target by following classroom expectations? So this is kind of like, how did you do just in managing your body and being able to stay focused? Would it be four, I'm an expert, I was fully engaged in trying, or three, I'm a master, I was mostly engaged in trying, or two, I am an apprentice, I sometimes tried, or one, I am a novice, I had a hard time participating today. So this is just basically how did you control your body and did you stay focused and did you keep trying even when it was hard? All right, I know you, most of you probably did a great job, if not all of you, and I look forward to doing the next story with you shortly. Have a great day. Bye, boys and girls.